Thank you all for joining today. I just want to start by um, acknowledging that right now, given everything we're facing, not only with our own families, but with learners um, in classrooms that we're working in and organizations that we're supporting, that really more than ever, we need to make time and space for our hearts, our minds and our souls to heal. And, and that, that comes first and foremost. So the fact that you're joining us today and joining to hear a small piece of my conviction and my message, I'm incredibly thankful and thankful to Randy, Nathan, Jill, and the team at Fielding um, for creating this space, not just for me, but for others to share their message and to bring us together. I wanna start and dive right into the work as I do if you know me and ask you to consider what powerful learning looks like. Go ahead and type in the chat what you think powerful learning looks like. We all know from chats with Yang Zhao and Susie Boss, who's on with us today, and the students last week, that we need change. In survey after survey of educators, parents, leaders, we report that we know there needs to be system change and that what we're doing isn't working for learners. Jamar Lee, a learner who's on this call today, has expressed for years that change is needed and I bet if you asked a lot of learners in your own communities, in your own classrooms, they would say the same. So what would that look like if we were to change? What would you, how would you describe it? Learning that becomes a part of you, shares Roger. Learning with real world re revelant, shares Ken. When someone takes a lesson to make it their own and brings it into action, Cop uh, competency, autonomy, relatedness, Exactly, co-designed by students. I just gave you 30 seconds to share what you think powerful learning could look like. And we already know, we already know collectively that something needs to be done differently. If we all know this and we all know that we need change, what would it look like? What would it look like if all of us were united and moving towards a common goal in recreating what learning could be and should be for students? And if every student in every school had these types of experiences, experiences where they have agency like Rachel sharing, they have local relevant, uh, relevance like Ellen is saying, or that they're connected to relationships with people not only in their own classroom, but in their communities and abroad. What would that do? What would it do for the world? How would that impact our democracy, justice, equity, climate, how would that fundamentally change how we interact with each other and the world that we're facing today? I firmly believe if every learner and quite frankly, every educator had powerful learning experiences like those you're describing in the chat, we would all be living and thriving in a better world. We see glimpses of this in schools across the country. Some of those schools with which you are a part of, or you've probably been a part of helping create. Jill on this call has worked in schools for over two decades, doing just that, creating places of learning and spaces of learning that empower students, that give them agency and bring them together in community. We believe that these types of experiences where learners, educators, and everyone um, is thriving are are called boundless experiences. That's why we founded the organization to truly unleash the potential and really make the dream come true that we've all been hoping for and all been waiting for. Right now, we realize at Boundless that we have this unique opportunity, despite the fact that we're in crisis, to take advantage of what's going on, to take a hard look at the inequities that are in our system and design for a new design spaces, design experiences that truly do create boundless learning and unleash the potential of everyone and everywhere. We know that this is going to require people coming together just like this on this call um, in physical built spaces, in virtual spaces. We know it's going to require us to look at learning differently. We know right now learning in its truest sense is not being captured the way that it should. Learning looks like what you see these young people doing on the screen. It's not maybe in a physical school building. It might be outside in a park. It might be in a community because we're not gonna be able to go back to physical school buildings as we once knew it this fall. 
It might look like capturing learning at home with dad or with mom, learning how to cook, learning how to do math, or learning a new skill and working on a project. It might look like a student at an architecture firm redesigning a community so that it's safer and a way that we can all be socially distant while still figuring out how to interact. We know at Boundless that these changes and how we teach, how we approach learning, and how we look at the spaces in which we learn is going to have to be different. Assessment companies, <laughs> textbooks um, are going to go harder than ever to try and tell us that measuring what matters and measuring learning has to happen in a particular space or in a particular way. And we just all know that's not true. So how can we collectively think about these, even these three examples I just shared, outside in community with mom or dad or caregiver or with uh, a business leader working on a project? How can we collectively harness our own power and potential to think about a new way of looking at learning so we don't go back to normal? We at Boundless envision that there's a world where everyone can be empowered to create these types of experiences. And that it's you on this call, it's your colleague, it's a parent down the road that are actually the change makers that we wanna see. It's not another thought leader. It's not another textbook company. It's you, right? You've known this all along. There's just been barriers, policies, and practices enforced upon you and harping down on you, telling you what you should be doing when all along you've known that it's these types of experiences, these boundless learning experiences, they're gonna get at the heart and soul of who humans are and fully unleash the potential of the world and create a better place for us all. That's what our vision is and this is what we believe. Like I just said, that it's you. It's you on this call. It's you working in your PLC coming together and figuring out how to make, to make it happen. Um, we also believe that that's a really big aspiration and that even though we all want this change, it feels big and looming and it's scary and there's a lot of challenges ahead of us. But we, we also know in true theory of change that networks, when they come together, each working towards a common goal and articulating small steps that they can take towards that greater goal truly can make that happen. Joining today is just one small step in the bigger picture and the bigger puzzle of making that happen. One of my favorite quotes is, um, everyone moving in the same direction with the same idea is a cult. Everyone moving in the same direction with a different idea, that's a movement, right? And what we have right now is a movement. Um, and I'm interested in making that movement happen and movement go and not just talking about it. So that's why you see here, the third part on this screen is that it's small steps that we each need to take in order to make that happen. I know it's possible and I'm committed to helping anyone <laughs> anywhere who wants to come along. I've been thinking about the numbers a lot for any of you math educators on and just consider if we have over 3.2 million educators in the US alone, and I saw we have people joining from across the world, so imagine the capacity there. But even if we just had 25% of those 3.2 million in the US, right around 800,000 educators, each taking a small step, committing right now to a small step they can do to help rethink learning, to help reimagine what's possible, to help re uh, to create more equitable learning spaces, to help think about the power of place and how learning is gonna happen in an apartment, in a park, in a design studio. And how can we each individually take a step and move towards that common goal and aspiration? That would be 800,000 steps closer to our goal, closer to really reimagining education. Um, and ultimately, that would be big change. So if you feel small, if you feel like you can't do anything, consider that equation, right? Consider that math and consider how we could all get there if each of us commit to one small step. And I just wanna close by saying, that's what I'm asking you to do. I'd love for you in the chat to share what is the one thing that you can commit to doing so that we don't miss out on this opportunity to truly reimagine what education can be to provide learners, to provide educators really boundless learning experiences 
the types of experiences that if you've been in classrooms for years, like I have, you and I both know what that looks like. And when a learner is really thriving, they have agency, they're working on something of meaning, and they're connecting with other humans and sharing their progress and their work. How are you gonna go boundless? How are you gonna come along with me and the other 3.2 million educators in the US and other educators worldwide saying, no, we're not gonna go back to normal and we're truly gonna make this happen. Think about the learners, like I said, in apartments, in parks, in libraries, how are we going to capture that learning and truly not just make this a conversation, but make it a movement? Small steps lead to big change. Thank you for your time. Please follow me and I'll be available to chat in the breakout rooms after.